heat siphon compressor change out. You'll need a Phillips head, a small flathead, and a regular flathead screwdriver, a utility knife, a pipe cutter, needle nose pliers, a 1 and 1 8 wrench, a 1 and 1 16 wrench, a half inch wrench, and equipment for brazing. The first thing you want to do is recover the refrigerant, as this can take some time and there are other things you can do while the refrigerant is being recovered. Connect your recovery equipment to the two service ports on the heat siphon. Follow the directions for your recovery machine and begin the recovery process. If possible, disconnect the water piping to allow better removal of the back panel. To remove the back panel, you have to remove the screws on the four corners of it as well as the two across the top. If you have an older heat siphon, there may be a retaining strap for the heat exchanger. There'll be one screw located in the upper center of the back panel that would also need removed. Also remove the black retaining ring if your heat siphon has one. And peel back the back panel. To remove the entire top assembly, remove the two hex screws in the corners and the Phillips head screw on the front Remove the fan motors wires from the contactor and the run capacitor and remove this conduit lock nut to push all the wires down through the back panel. The entire top assembly should be free now to be lifted off of the unit. Next we're removing the compressors wires. There are two heater wires at the top of the contactor on this model. And then you also remove the compressor wires from the bottom two lugs, black and yellow in this model. There's also a red wire connected to the run capacitor that you'll be removing as well. Remove the conduit lock nut from the compressor harness fitting and those wires should be pushed down through. From the back side you'll be removing the compressor's wires. This model had captive access fitting, so I moved the recovery machine's hoses to be inside to continue removing the back panel. Disconnect the wires for the high and low pressure switches and push them down through the holes in the back panel. This should allow the back panel to be swung back farther out of the way. Remove the high pressure switch if it's going to be reused on the new compressor. You need to remove the cork tape and TXV bulb from the main suction line. Cut and peel the cork tape back from the clamp and use a flathead screwdriver to loosen and release the TXV bulb. Before continuing, make sure the recovery process is fully completed. Use a tubing cutter to cut the main suction line. Use a 1 and 1 8 and a 1 and 1 16 cents wrench for the following step. Loosen the brass fitting to release the heat exchanger from the compressor.
Use a brick or a block to lift one side of the heat siphon up. This will allow you access underneath to take off the compressor's mounting bolts. The compressor is mounted to the base pan using four half inch nuts and bolts. Once these four bolts are removed, the compressor is free from the unit and can be removed. Place the new compressor into the heat siphon. I like to prop up one side of the heat siphon if I can to allow access to the compressor mounting bolts. Install the half inch mounting hardware including the half inch bolt and nut, the fender washer and lock washer. Wetting the mounting feet can sometimes help to insert it into the compressor's foot. Tighten the mounting hardware with a half inch wrench. Cut and align the copper tubing and use a coupler to join the two cut ends. I use an air acetylene torch and Dynaflow brazing rod to braze the coupler's joint. Reconnect the heat exchanger to the brass fitting. Be sure to install the black o-ring and white seal ring inside this fitting. Tighten the fitting using the two large wrenches. You can use Loctite to seal these threads. The refrigerant system is now closed, and you should pressurize with nitrogen to check for leaks. Reattach the TXV bulb to the suction line. Make sure that it's on the side of the suction line, not the top or the bottom. Apply cork tape to the TXV bulb to insulate it from the outside air. Secure the capillary to prevent rubbing with other parts of the heat siphon. Reinsert the thermostat bulb into the heat exchanger and insulate it with cork tape. Feed the new compressor wires up through the hole in the back panel and put the fitting up into the hole. Secure the fitting with the lock nut. Place the fan assembly back on top of the heat siphon. Route the wires down to just below the back panel. Reconnect the green ground wire from the fan motor and the unit's green ground wire to the brass screw. Carefully align the two quarter inch service ports with the lower opening in the back panel. Feed the fan motor's wires up through the back panel. Secure the top assembly with the Phillips head screw on the round side and a hex head screw on each corner. Put the heat exchanger's retaining nuts on the upper and lower fittings. Then reattach the back panel with six Phillips head screws. The first two on the top are longer than the rest. Reattach the water fittings if you took them apart to service the heat siphon. Here we're reconnecting the wires from the fan motor assembly and the compressor assembly. If the compressor has had a heater, you'll connect those wires to the top of the contactor so that they get constant 240 volt. 
the red wire from the compressor goes to the compressor run capacitor. The black wire goes to the left lug on the lower side of the contact contactor and the yellow wire goes to the right lug on the lower fittings of the contactor. The fan motor has a black wire and a white wire. The black wire goes on the left side, same as the compressor black wire, and the white wire goes on the right side, same as the yellow compressor wire. Make sure to connect the capacitor's black wire in the same lug as the compressor's black wire. You'll see them coupled together in the video. The fan motor also has two brown wires that connect to its small fan run capacitor. Reattach the low pressure switch and the high pressure switch using the 7 16 and 9 16 inch wrenches. Carefully bend them into place and then connect their wires to the appropriate places. The low pressure switch wires go to the time delay and the water pressure switch. The high pressure switches wires go to the time delay and the right side of the contactor. Run test the heat siphon and then reattach all the access doors.